In this demo, we're going to see how we can write some function, simple function in a notebook. We can execute that function locally inside our notebook, but track everything that goes in and out uh, into this function, since you have an ex experiment of data tracking on that function. Later on, we'll show how we can distribute that function on a cluster just without doing any real work, just running the same function as a serverless function on a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, or even how we can just take this function and load it as a model within our uh, other function and, and just execute that. So that's a way for packaging functions and running them later on with full experiment tracking and data tracking on a cluster or locally. So we're going to write a very simple function. Uh, this function is just opening an archive, a zip file that could be located in various location, for example, S3 bucket or a file system unzip that file into a directory that we specify and, and then um, logging all this information. So our function is very simple. It's called open archive. It has the first parameter which is reserved for ML run related issues called context. We're going to see how it works. We have the target directory where we want to write the output to. We have the archive URL which we're essentially downloading this zip file for, from and extracting it. We call it a data item object because it's a data object that we move into the function. We have documentation of our function which will be automatically read by ML run and extracted to add metadata into our function code. Later on we just write a simple function that unzip the file and writes it into this target directory. We also want to log this information into the experiment, into this execution that we actually downloaded the content and written that into uh, this directory and maybe even just log some extra uh, text with that. So that's our function. We're just going to uh, import that. And the next thing we want to do is what we call migrate this function inside the notebook into an object, into a function object, object that can later be run everywhere, either in our notebook, as a serverless function, as a model, and we could use it in a pipeline, etc. So we're just going to run this code to function, which is taking this function code, it's automatically going to detect it, uh, it's giving it a type, a type could be various things like Dask or Spark or simple job, etc. We give it the handler name that by default it's going to call every time we are running this function. An image that may be, may be required to run this function on a cluster. We can also specify packages which will be automatically added to our uh, image if we need extra packages, you know, like scikit-learn, pandas, etc. But this image is sort of already has a lot of things built in. We can describe our function, categorize it, and add additional labels. So I'm just going to run this, and this is going to generate my function object. If you really want to see what's behind the scene, you could you know, convert your function object into a YAML and see it has all sorts of information, the documentation, the resources, even the code is binarized here. You know, the origin, the git tags, all of that information is recorded automatically. And later on, we can just go and export our function into a file, or we can store that, export that into a database. We can save it into uh, a Git or a marketplace and later use that function in other places. So now that we've export, we want to now read that function and start using it. So we can just import a function from a file, a URL, a database, a marketplace. So if you want it from the marketplace, you can set the marketplace configuration and separately then we, we can just go and read that function from the marketplace and it's a version marketplace and then once we read this uh, function for the marketplace we can just check the documentation and you see remember the documentation we put in the code it's already visible here because the ml run automatically recorded our documentation not just the function so once we ran that, now we want to create a task. A task is a set of parameters that we want to use in order to execute our function. Remember, we had two main parameters, a target directory, and we had the data item. 
essentially we want to pass data into the function so we call it a data item uh, it's passed as the input parameter so our task will get a target directory from here and gets a source artifact essentially a zip file with a bunch of images from that url in s3 so that's our task and now we're just going to run our task with our function locally meaning inside our notebook but we still want to record all the information about this execution so we're going to run it and see that it's running is essentially downloading a large zip file in a minute you'll see that it's uh, finished and you see it's finished everything successful we have all the logs we have all the information about where the data landed all the parameters all the execution details even the url to the ui which we'll examine in a minute next thing we want to do is run the same function in a cluster so we do want to mount some file system for the location of those uh, files we're going to add to the function object and a description of where to store the data it's using something called kubeflow modifiers as a trick to mount add additional volume information to our function so and we give it a volume information auto mount which is automatically going to figure out the volume okay we're just going to add that into our spec and now i'm just going to take this function and run it with the task that I specified before. You see, it's exactly the same task this time, running it on the cluster. So I'm gonna run it and you see that in the background, it actually created a pod. A pod in Kubernetes is a container that is running my function. And now it's executing. You see it's interactive log that I can see here. And in a minute, again, it's gonna finish and dump all the results into the destination directory, record all the information, so I want to see that visually, actually while the job is running, all I need to do is just click this URL and it's open ML run user interface. So I can see all the information about my function execution, all the metadata, actually which machine it was running, you know, all sorts of other data. What were the inputs? Remember the archive URL, what were the artifacts that were generated, logs, results, etc. All of that is fully recorded. Nice thing, it's it's actually, you, know, you can see every run is recorded. Every time I run, I can even go back and forth with the history. But even the code is linked. You see the actual code version is linked. So for every execution, I can see what was the code that was used in order to run this execution. So you see, no hassle. You can you know move around between artifacts and code and function and executions. Uh, and you have all this information here. So, okay, I executed my function inside the cluster. The last thing we can do, which is pretty interesting, instead of loading my function as a job, separate job, maybe I want to, you know, take a bunch of functions and run them in memory and create a, a local workflow within my, within a bigger function or something like that. So we can even take that function and convert it into a model. So I can essentially go read some function from a library and make it a model. And once it's a model, I can just go and run the model as if it was just a local function inside my memory space. So it's, it's pretty uh, cool. And this is really what ML run allows you to do is build very simple function, create a building block, and then take that building block and put it inside a bigger workflow and compose very complex things out of it. And all the ML ops aspects of training, uh, of tracking, for experiments, for data, uh, running it distributed, all of that is fully automated.